FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is June 5th, 2017. First five months of the year are gone. Trump has been president for, oh my goodness, it'll be five months on the 20th of this month. And what has changed? What stayed the same? Market fluctuations, gyrations, where do you put your money? Well, our good friend from MoneyballEconomics.com, Andrew Zatlin's with us. Oh, and one other thing before we get into it, emails. Email us at kl at kerrylutz.com. Andrew, welcome back. Always a pleasure. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Morning, good afternoon, whatever time it is. Hey, so what's doing with the economy here? I hear like mixed signals, Andrew. On the one hand, unemployment claims are down, down to very low levels. On the other hand, GDP looks like it's struggling. Auto sales seem to be tanking. I'm, I don't know what to make of housing. What's your take here? You know, we've gotten a lot of macro signals over the last week that, that confirm sort of uh, my, my worldview. And, and, and maybe I could keep it starting at the 30,000 foot level. We can drill down into the, the various data points that are coming out that are confirming where we are and then talk about, you know, what are some data points that are going to come out that will tell us where to go next? Uh, fundamentally, you know, we had a bunch of things happen in the second half that boosted the global economy and boosted the U.S. and gave us that 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 mirage of growth, that booming growth. Um, you, you might have heard some things, uh, reflation, Trumpflation. There were all these things happening, a lot of activity, but these were waves. And the nature of a wave is it ebbs and flows. We're at the end of that that ebbing and flowing cycle. And at the heart of it, though, was one important wave. And that was, a, a I call it the destocking, restocking wave. This time last year, the first part of the year, companies were just running around trying to cut costs. They were cutting inventory. They were, if you recall, um, employment was terrible in the first half of the year. Inventory of people and things was being pulled back. So that was the destocking part. As we get into the second half, you know, kind of like a drunk zigzagging on the highway, they went too far one way and they had to go in the other direction. So they suddenly restocked. You know, we, we got too thin on our inventories and our stockpiles. So all of a sudden, companies then started restocking. That doesn't take a long time. So that was sort of the nature of the fourth quarter and coming into the first quarter. In the first quarter, you had that other thing, this this love affair, the honeymoon with Trump. He was going to come in. Big Daddy was going to drop money everywhere. You know, it's like Uncle Scrooge McDuck was coming in town and he was going to build dams, bridges and do all these wonderful things. Well, the timing of this is really important, Kerry, because the, the nature of a company, of a business is, is hibernation. You hibernate and you come out of hibernation, say, January, February time period, and you look around and you start getting in touch again with your clients. You know, what is what is their worldview? What are they going to be buying this year? What's their budget? So by the end of the first quarter, you've got this window that opens of activity. That is when you're pretty much going to start your hiring. That's pretty much when you're going to start buying your equipment. You know, whatever it is you need, your investment pretty much kicks off around March and it goes through the summer. By the time September rolls around, you're winding down. That's the window. And that's the window that Trump was dealing with. And unfortunately, this excitement, this Trumpflation, as we got to March, kind of peaked. And I think you see that pretty much in the stock market. It kind of peaked uh, in February and then all of a sudden started to slow down again, primarily because these initiatives that Trump put on the table were not really translating. And you, you had the ACA, the Obamacare repeal, that failed. That was a big failure from the standpoint of sharks smelled blood in the water, all of a sudden you could push back on this Trump mandate anywhere. And that's kind of what we've seen. We've also seen the Democratic Party effectively use their strategy of distraction. I mean, look at all the things they're doing. You know, Russia, Russia, Russia. You know, they're going after everybody, not because there's any meat there. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think the Democrats really believe that this is going to yield any fruit, but it's heavily distracting to the Trump administration. It keeps him from moving his initiatives forward. And that's what we're now seeing. We get to the second quarter. Businesses need to start. They've got that window. They need to start investing. And what they realized by May was that Trump initiatives we're not going to have any traction whatsoever in 2017. And let's face it, in early May, he still hadn't even put forth a tax plan. 
So what that means at the 30,000 foot level, you have a real economic demand that's starting to, you know, we, we finished right sizing and realigning inventories to actual demand. Demand is there, but you now have to kind of, the honeymoon's over with Trump in the sense of what he can and can't accomplish. 2017 is written off in terms of this Keynesian money coming from the government, public spending on stuff. And so it's back back to basics of you know, GDP, about 2%, you know, mild, very mild growth. Now that, Kerry, that's a good thing. Again, go back to this time last year and people were talking recession. I was talking recession because businesses were, were talking recessions. They were pulling back. So we've shifted trajectory into a more positive place we, you know, sort of the finger's been taken off that button, but it's not this up and to the right, things are great. It's things are good. We're shifting from layoffs potentially to no layoffs and, you know, steady as you go. And there's really no tail. There's nothing driving us forward per se. In fact, there are probably some headwinds out there. The auto sector's the big headwind I think we've got to get through going forward. Retail, another big headwind. And those are those are out there. That's going to be a drag on the economy, especially autos, by the way. And so as we adjust, you know, as expectations get lowered, not to a negative place, but away from this fantastic, optimistic, bullish place, um, you listen to the earnings calls. And this is pretty much what the CEOs are saying on their earnings calls, which is our, everyone's optimistic. We like the rhetoric, but it hasn't really translated into anything definitive. And so we've got a higher and we've got to invest based on what we're seeing, not on the potential downstream stuff. And again, that's more moderate than I think people were hoping for. And so I think the second half is at risk. Um, and, and so we're starting to see those macro data points kind of confirm this. I don't want to call it rolling over because rolling over sounds dire and dramatic, but call it, you know, we kind of peaked and now we're kind of pulling back a little bit from that peak. Still good, just maybe not as good as people were hoping for. Mm-hmm. Well, I would say reports of Donald Trump's failure as president are greatly uh, exaggerated and premature. Um, I don't know what he'll eventually get through. That's anybody's guess. But um, this isn't a guy who just quits because some people in Congress say no. And, you know, he spent the uh, better part of the early part of his term just getting a handle on stuff because, you know, the country is a mess. The government is a mess for sure. And hey, look, you got keys. He said approved Keystone. The Dakota Access Pipeline is going to start. I think it started pumping a couple of days ago, Andrew. I mean, just the elimination of regulation and the retardation in its purest form of the word retard, meaning slow down or stop of all regulation psychologically uh, has definitely uh, helped the economy move forward, don't you think? I want to be very clear, Kerry. I'm not criticizing Trump. I'm not criticizing uh, his performance not at to all. Say you were, uh, uh, yeah, no. I just, but for the audience, I want I want yeah. I want everyone to know. I'm not. Sure. Hey, you know what? I like the potential. I like the disruptive potential. I like mm-hmm. what is possible. I love the possibilities. I'm simply pointing out. You know, if you're a business person, it's June. You still don't have a tax plan with detail that tells you what you should and shouldn't be doing. That it's too late in the year. You got you got to look beyond that. And and unfortunately. That's what we're talking about is what's the here and now versus the potential. So I think unfortunately or fortunately, we got, you know, and I don't think this is unusual for any new administration. I think this is probably fairly typical. You're getting right. your sea legs under you, working through the, the the beltway politics to actually get your initiatives. I mean, let's let's go back to Obama. Um I'm sorry if that put a bad taste in people's mouths, but let's go back to Obama's first year. <laughs> it took him over a year. He, he had this huge health care mandate that he wanted to put in place. It was fits and starts in over a year before that was actually on the table being looked at. Um, and so I think we're, we're in the same period. I, th- I just think that there was a lot of this, you know, waiting in the wings, Republican Party, you know, eight years, they're in charge. There's this huge control of Congress, state level control, a, 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 a wide and broad and deep capability to enact legislation. So I think there was a lot of hope. Um, and unfortunately, politics enters the scene. And so I think, again, you know, Trump is going to have a fight. I think I, if I were to criticize him, I would say he's just too easily distracted and, and it was doing too too many things at once. You know, remember, I mean, it was silly. Remember, we had that first hundred days. There was this big focus. What has he done in the first hundred right. days? Uh-huh. I couldn't catch a, catch a break on anything. You know, no matter what he did, you know, Harvard did a study that said 80% of the reporting on the poor guy was negative. 
you know, compared to 50 percent for prior administrations, there has been just, you know, this this ongoing, you know, beat the gong. This guy's, you know, a dud. No, nothing. It doesn't matter what he's done or hasn't done. Right. Yeah. I just am saying from a business perspective, from an investing perspective, there was a disconnect between hope and reality. The hope for change still possible. Trump still moving forward on things possibly distracted on a bunch of other things. The Democrats are doing him no favors with that distraction. I think they have him down. If you can keep him tweeting at three in the morning, that means he's not doing something else at three in the morning. And I think they see that. That's their only hope and prayer is to keep the guy busy on stuff that doesn't really matter. And unfortunately, Donald Trump is a fighter and you know, you can poke at him only so long before he starts to poke back. And that's the Democratic strategy, in my opinion. So from a from a business standpoint, he didn't bring presents. You know, uncle came to town and he talked about a lot of things, but there's been no doling out of money. Mm -hmm. And so businesses are back to, you know, what's what should we do? So that's where the interesting investment opportunities are. Yeah. You know, the S&P has flowed up as everyone got excited and the Fed banks threw money and, you know, they're doing what they're going to do. It's very important to notice that the Fed has raised rates twice now and the markets have shrugged it off. Now, granted, it's a small, but they've shrugged it off. Yeah. And that's very interesting. Historically, we've never seen that. And considering, you know, you've got a low level of growth, you know, pick pick your number, 2%, 3%. Yeah, it's, it's low. But all of a sudden, you've added 50 basis points of interest rate on top of that. Um, and you don't have inflation right now, so that's why the pain isn't there. But, you know, you start saying, well, now we're talking about this month, another quarter percent. Wow. You know, they're throwing it out there and the markets are shrugging it off. We, we, we're in uncharted territory. This is what I think is interesting, Carrie, about investment opportunities. May I may I bend your ear on, on my view here? Yeah, sure. OK, so. A lot of people would say the market's disconnected from fundamentals. There are tons of charts out there that show you know, economic growth kind of flat, you know, moving sideways, and you've got the S&P raging going up. I have seen the best work done at this time taking one more step in looking at that analysis. And what you got to do is not look at the market as this homogenous beast. You have to look at it from the perspective of there's the, the market, and then there are 10 stocks that are driving almost 100% of the market's growth, stock price growth. And those are the what they call the fangs, you know, the... Facebooks, Apples, Netflix, Googles, and there's even an extension that the, the the fangs, you know, throw Amazon in there and Adobe and a couple of others. Bottom line, the market is behaving rationally. If you take the following perspective, if you say, let's get rid of these high growth stocks and look at the other 99.99999% of the stocks out there, the market is definitely looking at the fundamental performance of each and every stock. So I, I throw out the following in my investment approach. When I look at these FANG stocks, what I see is they're not going up because of fundamentals. They're going up because if you are the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, if you are Singapore's sovereign bank, if you are the sovereign bank of Norway, you're shoving tens of billions of dollars into the U.S. market and you're a big whale and you need deep waters to swim in. So the money has to flow only to these half trillion dollar valuation companies in order for you to invest and be liquid and not be seen what you're doing. Same thing with hedge funds that have tens and hundreds of billions of dollars to throw into the, the equity markets. They have to put it into Apple. Let's take a step back here. Apple has not only peaked, they're slowing down. Their performance is actually going down. The only reason this latest quarter was good is they had the benefit of one extra day of sales. Mm -hmm. Doesn't sound like, <clears throat> but yeah. when you're Apple, that one extra day is, I don't know, what is that, a billion dollars of sales? It's, it's huge, right? Bottom line, the, their cell phone growth is stunning. Everything they're doing is slowing down, but the stock keeps going up. That mm -hmm. tells you that those stocks stocks are disconnected from reality, the FANG stocks. Mm -hmm. So you focus on the others. I mean, I would not fight the FANG stocks because ultimately that's where the big players at the poker table are playing. You don't have the stakes. I don't have the stakes to play in that mm -hmm. game. And you don't fight these guys because they're the only ones who know who the sucker at the table is and it's you and me. But these right. other stocks are behaving rationally. And so what I do is I look at who is, uh, you know, stepping on that operational gas pedal, who is bulking up and who isn't. You know, let's use an example. Last week, Michael Kors. Michael Kors was one that I called out as, as having, you know, th they're, they're in sheer defensive mode. And sure enough, you know, they, they crashed and burned. Um, and you could look at that very easily. They've been on a, a declining revenue path for some time. They did not have a turnaround story. And the data that I collect says operationally, um, 
they're basically almost to a point where they're they're having to charge their employees to park in the parking lot kind of a situation. <laughs> you know, it's it's yeah. you know they're struggling. So when a company you know coming out of the corporate world as I do, and, and this is important, I do not come from Wall Street. I come from the corporate world. I come from Main Street. I come from an operational standpoint. I know exactly what a CFO is doing when they're in panic mode. I know exactly where they're cutting because you can get by for three to six months trimming some spending. Interesting data point. If you look at Las Vegas meetings, Las Vegas is the mecca for business meetings. Year to date, Las Vegas business meetings, the number of meetings are down almost 20% compared to last year. That's important for two things. Last year was not exactly a stellar year for the U.S. economy in the first half. Companies were pulling back. So even compared to a weak period, you have companies saying, you know what, let's not go to Vegas to have our boondoggle meeting. As much as that would be a great morale booster, let's maybe stay home, you know, maybe have a paintball contest or something. That's the state of affairs with businesses today. They're still trimming. And what I do is I look for the companies who are trimming the most because that's not a good sign. And then I look for the companies that are doing the opposite, that are on you know this massive spending streak. And that's where you put your money down. And the other is where you, you, know, you buy puts and calls or you just make sure your portfolio is not too exposed to companies. You know, like in the retail sector, it's a little late for the retail sector. But aerospace and defense... No, that's wow. You could still make money there because we haven't even seen them starting to sell that hundred billion dollars of goodies to Saudi Arabia. And then there's going to be the secondary wave of Israel is going to raise their hand and say, wait a second, can you top us off a little bit? And then you're going to have Vietnam versus China. Vietnam saying, hey, you know, maybe we could buy another few billion and Japan, the same thing. And Trump is out there uh, pushing NATO. You know, you guys need to spend tens of billions of dollars more. And guess what? You want to buy our stuff. So this is a this is a massive period for for that sector. There and, and and we're seeing that in their opex spending. They're stepping on the gas, not the brakes. All right. Well, sounds like uh, it sounds like the future is a little uncertain here. Um, it sounds like more of the same. I guess a trend in motion stays in motion until it stops. So we're just going to have to see uh, what happens. Uh, you know, I think uh, Trump's agenda, large parts of it will wind up going through because I think the purpose of a uh, politician is to get himself reelected. That's why he lives. Uh, Forget about everything else. And once they start to perceive that not passing his agenda, the Republicans will be their passport to defeat. They will start uh, getting serious about implementing them. But like you said, 2017 has gone already. So we could probably look forward to it towards the end of the year at the earliest. Uh, but they're out to defeat him. However, once they realize that uh, his interests have become their interests, I think you'll see a major turnabout. Anyway, Andrew, uh, where's the best place to find you? Always come to Moneyball Economics if you want a free weekly update of what what we're thinking. And we've got the Moneyball Trader if you want to take a look at our investment choices, ideas, I should say. All right. Hey, and if you got any questions, comments, email kl at kerrylutz.com. The Twitter feeds at Kerry Lutz. Facebook page is Financial Survival Network. Andrew, we will talk to you again real soon. Be well. Thanks and take care. Happy investing, everyone. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. We're not really translating. And you, you had the ACA, the Obamacare repeal. That failed. That was a big failure from the standpoint of sharks smelled blood in the water, all of a sudden you could push back on this Trump mandate anywhere. And that's kind of what we've seen. We've also seen the Democratic Party effectively use their strategy of distraction. I mean, look at all the things they're doing. You know, Russia, Russia, Russia. You know, they're going after everybody, not because there's any meat there. I mean, I don't, I don't think the Democrats really believe that this is going to yield any fruit, but it's heavily distracting to the Trump administration. It keeps him from moving his initiatives forward. And that's what we're now seeing. We get to the second quarter. Businesses need to start. They've got that window. They need to start investing. And what they realized by May was that Trump initiatives we're not going to have any traction whatsoever in 2017. And let's face it, in early May, he still hadn't even put forth a tax plan. 
So what that means is at the 30,000 foot level, you have a real economic demand that's starting to, you know, we, we finished right sizing and realigning inventories to actual demand. Demand is there, but you now have to kind of, the honeymoon's over with Trump in the sense of what he can and can't accomplish. 2017 is written off in terms of this Keynesian money coming from the government, public spending on stuff. And so it's back back to base in our stockpiles. So all of a sudden companies then started restocking. That doesn't take a long time. So that was sort of the nature of the fourth quarter and coming into the first quarter. In the first quarter, you had that other thing, this, this love affair, the honeymoon with Trump. He was going to come in. Big Daddy was going to drop money everywhere. You know, it's like Uncle Scrooge McDuck was coming in town and he was going to build dams, bridges and do all these wonderful things. Well, the timing of this is really important, Carrie, because the the nature of a company, of a business is, is hibernation. You hibernate And you come out of hibernation, say, January, February time period, and you look around and you start getting in touch again with your clients. What is what is their worldview? What are they going to be buying this year? What's their budget? So by the end of the first quarter, you've got this window that opens of activity. That is when you're pretty much going to start your hiring. That's pretty much when you're going to start buying your equipment, whatever it is you need. Your investment pretty much kicks off around March and it goes through the summer. By the time September rolls around, you're winding down. That's the window. And that's the window that Trump was dealing with. And unfortunately, this excitement, this Trumpflation, as we got to March, kind of peaked. And I think you see that pretty much in the stock market. It kind of peaked uh, in February and then all of a sudden started to slow down again, primarily because these initiatives that Trump put on the table. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is June 5th, 2017. First five months of the year are gone. Trump has been president for, oh my goodness, it'll be five months on the 20th of this month. And what has changed? What stayed the same? Market fluctuations, gyrations, where do you put your money? Well, our good friend from MoneyballEconomics.com, Andrew Zatlin's with us. Oh, and one other thing before we get into it, emails. Email us at kl at kerrylutz.com. Andrew, welcome back. Always a pleasure. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Morning, good afternoon, whatever time it is. Hey, so what's doing with the economy here? I hear like mixed signals, Andrew. On the one hand, unemployment claims are down, down to very low levels. On the other hand, GDP looks like it's struggling. Auto sales seem to be tanking. I'm, I'm basics of you know, GDP about two percent, you know, mild, very mild growth. Now that Carrie, that's a good thing. Again, go back to this time last year, and people were talking recession. I was talking recession because businesses were were talking recessions. They were pulling back. So we've shifted trajectory into a more positive place. We, you know, sort of the finger's been taken off that button, but it's not this up and to the right. Things are great. It's things are good. We're shifting from layoffs potentially to no layoffs and, you know, steady as you go. And there's really no tail. There's nothing driving us forward per se. In fact, there are probably some headwinds out there. The auto sector's the big headwind. I think we've got to get through going forward. Retail, another big headwind. And those are those are out there. That's going to be a drag on the economy, especially autos, by the way. And so as we adjust, you know, as expectations get lowered, not to a negative place, but away from this fantastic, optimistic, bullish place, um, you listen to the earnings calls, and this is pretty much what the CEOs are saying on their earnings calls, which is, our, everyone's optimistic. We like the rhetoric, but it hasn't really translated into anything definitive. And so we've got to hire, and we've got to invest based on what we're seeing. Not on what to make of housing. What's your take here? You know, we've gotten a lot of macro signals over the last week that, that confirm sort of uh, my, my worldview. And, and, and maybe I could keep it starting at the 30,000 foot level. We can drill down into the, the various data points that are coming out that are confirming where we are and then talk about, you know, what are some data points that are going to come out that will tell us where to go next? Um, fundamentally, you know, we had a bunch of things happen in the second half that boosted the global economy and boosted the U.S. and gave us that 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 mirage of growth, that booming growth. Um, you you might have heard some things, uh, reflation, Trumpflation. There were all these things happening, a lot of activity, but these were waves. And the nature of a wave is it ebbs and flows. We're at the end of that that ebbing and flowing cycle. 
And at the heart of it, though, was one important wave. And that was, a, a I call it the destocking, restocking wave. This time last year, the first part of the year, companies were just running around trying to cut costs. They were cutting inventory. They were, if you recall, um, employment was terrible in the first half of the year. The inventory of people and things was being pulled back. So that was the destocking part. As we get into the second half, you know, kind of like a drunk zigzagging on the highway, they went too far one way and they had to go in the other direction. So they suddenly restocked. You know, we, we got too thin on our inventory.